So I've resliced the first print. I'll be back again. <laughs> Welcome to this video. It's going to be a slightly different, more like vlog style because today is the first day of school or my second semester of my master's degree. I have one of my new courses today and I thought I would start the video by making coffee. I'm a normal uh, black coffee drinker, but recently I've been whisking almond milk and adding maple syrup to it and it tastes kind of like a latte. I, I just pour in some almond milk, add that, and then secret ingredient, maple syrup, and then I just whisk. If you had a frother, this would be a lot easier but I didn't want to spend $10 on a frother when I had a, a whisk at home. So this is my arm workout for the day. And hope I don't overfill the perfect amount. Should spend like a moment to explain how exactly my program works. Currently I'm in a two-year master's research-based program. So that involves taking four courses and then doing a research-based project that ends with a thesis. I propose and defend my research. Today you'll see where I only have one class and then spend the rest of the day basically doing errands. So this semester, I have three classes, a computer science course, a mechanical engineering course, and a seminar course where the seminar on Fridays is basically I go in and listen to somebody present a research topic for like an hour. There's no homework. I just need to log hours for that. So I should clarify that the seminar course is not like the other topic courses where I have assignments, midterm, final, and I'm learning engineering theory. Basically, I'm in that class to log hours and I need a total of 36 hours as a requirement for my degree. So compared to undergrad, you're taking fewer courses and your schedule is a lot more open for other things to where a lot of my time should be dedicated to my research project. You'll see me in the lab a lot today in this video, and part of that is to get into more of a routine of coming to campus and being more productive in this room, but also I am the lab manager, so when things go wrong, I kind of have the responsibility to fix it, where in this case, I have the responsibility to get this printer up and running. So I've been working with IT to get it connected to the internet and then running calibration prints as instructed by the technician. Today I also fixed the lab drain situation with the eyewash station. Not every day is this busy, today was kind of hectic. I live some distance away from the university, so I like to compound all my tasks to when I'm going to be on campus for a course. This is a realistic like first day of school. I would say my first day of school last semester was just as busy. I had, I think, three meetings in one day, which is a lot. Even one meeting is a lot for me. In my first CAD time video, you probably saw this notebook right here. I bought this little like pocket notebook from the dollar store. Well, I finally finished this one, so we're on to a new one. I need to still cover it with stickers, but I'm going to make my to-do list today. So currently it's 11.55. I'm going to spend the next five minutes making my to-do list and aim to leave by two or three. My class starts at 5.30. I did have a print going in here overnight. So this is a Pet G print. Um, my two previous prototypes are these, which they do kind of look like turtle shells. But basically I'm prototyping like a drain cover for the lab. We have this, you'll hear more about it today. We have this like eyewash station where the floor was rotting. So I've been designing the drain cover and it has this spout thing to attach a tube to basically guide the water out of the eyewash station, through the tube, and down the drain without ever touching the floor. But this version is made from Pet G with a higher wall count, hoping that it's more watertight than its PLA counterpart. I'm going to coat the inside with two-part epoxy, so with the hopes that it's even more waterproof. So I need to do that before leaving because I'd like to get that installed. I printed this TPU gasket. It's supposed to go underneath to interface between the drain and the floor because this drain 
and my dad gave me a good example to show you. This drain has three holes that go into the floor, and so I'm leveraging these three mounting points to attach the drain cover, and so I will have a gasket in between to keep it watertight. Yeah, I hope it works. I also have one more print to run from it, so because it is a drain, I still wanted to be able to use the drain to dump liquids if I needed to. I made this little slit in the part. It slides in one way, like this, closes it off, um, but if you want to pour something, comes out, and then I made like a little funnel feature to help guide the liquid. Did I over-design this? Probably. Did it test my CAD skills? Yes! Was it fun? Yes! The next thing that I'd like to do before going to school is paint this eyesore of a top-down camera mount. So yesterday, I spent my time building like Evan Monsma and used some scrap wood to basically build myself like a top-down rig for my video camera. It doesn't have a lens on it currently. I think I want to paint this black and then add like some fun graffiti art on here in a white paint marker so that it matches this monitor arm that I have for it. Before bed I had written a to-do list on my hand. We've got wingnut, lab list, and bits. Okay, I need to get a fourth wingnut for this camera mount on my way to school from Home Depot because yesterday I bought four and I made the mistake of not checking all four and it turns out somebody had put a larger wingnut in the same spot so of course it doesn't fit and now I need to go and buy one for another 41 cents. Honestly, rookie mistake on my part. Will not be doing that again. Always double check your hardware when you buy all the loose ends at the hardware store because there's no guarantee it's gonna be exactly the size you think it is because people never put them back in the right spot. Bits, I need to bring my drill bits to school because our lab doesn't have any to-do list. And before leaving, what I'll start with is printing the slider. For a little bit of context, this is the slider I'm talking about. It is part of this drain cover that I printed night before out of Pet G. And so to complete this build, I need a slider. You'll see in a bit, I just wanted to give you context because this first day of school was honestly a bit chaotic. I'm gonna start the slider print. Also remembering I need to buy more glue sticks for my print bed because both of these are out, so add that to the to-do list. I normally have like a few sticks, but my few have run out. It's about 16 minutes. I think the next thing I'm going to do is remove supports on this drain and coat it with epoxy outside. I'm gonna need to make a quick modification to this. It's too wide. I'm going to narrow it just a little bit in the slicer and reprint. For anyone who's printed in Pet G, you know how much of a nightmare support removal is, especially after the part has cooled. And so removing support out of these really tiny slots was kind of a pain and it's still a little bit rough, but I think by accounting for that by slightly narrowing the actual slider, we'll be okay. I coated the inside of this part to waterproof it with epoxy, and it's kind of yellowish, but at least it's the inside, it's not the end of the world. I did finish painting the camera jig. I'm gonna clean this up and start heading to school. I now need to pack my bag. I'm hoping I have at least an hour before my class so that I can do a few lab repairs. Bring the gasket print for this lab drain repair. And then I need to bring the tube for it, as well as the hose clamps, bring the slider print. Then I'm going to bring my screwdriver. I also need to bring my bits because for some reason the lab doesn't have any. Okay, I managed to fit everything in this bag. If you recognize this design, it's a filament printer that I drew. We call him Frankie. I made a tote bag out of it. I am currently in the process of figuring out like a Redbubble account to 
make stickers like this and some of my other characters available, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully by the end of the year. I do have class at 5.30. We're gonna get out of here, because it turns out I also need to head to the bank for a school form last minute that just popped up in my email. Three cents. I got my two wing nuts, one that I actually need, and a spare just in case. All right. So for us, school starts on a Thursday, and today I only have one course. Being in a master's program, I only need to take four courses for my degree. I took two last semester, the additive manufacturing course and the CAD course, and this semester I'm taking optimization and a computer science like statistical machine learning course. Today I had my optimization course from 5.30 to 8.20, but we finished early. So I'm back in the lab running a laser calibration on the Smart Forge, and I did end up going to Canadian Tire nearby to get longer bolts to install this drain cover and the gasket. So currently, the Mark Forge is doing the laser scan, so hit next. You can see the laser moving along, so let's see. Your level is telling me what I need to do. Loosen the back screw very slightly and release it. So this is the back screw. There are three points of level on this bed, as you can see, left, right, and back. And I was just adjusting this screw based on this leveling, the laser leveling. Now is the manual adjustment with these shims. The Mark Forge system has two nozzles. The one in the back is the filament nozzle and then the one near the front is the fiber nozzle so there's a shim for each just like the paper test for your like ender 3 or any other manual bed leveling you do i have this shim and i'm fitting it under the nozzle and basically moving the bed up or down until i feel resistance so i don't feel any resistance I'm move it up twice Okay, I feel a slight resistance. Still see a gap. I'm going to nudge up one more time. So when you're using the shims, you don't want to touch these at all. I feel like that's good. Go next. So for the fiber nozzle, it's slightly different. Adjust the exposed two and a half Allen head screw on the top of the print head assembly to adjust the height of the fiber nozzle until you can feel slight resistance when sliding the shim. I already feel slight resistance, so I think it's just fine. I'm going to leave it. Now there's a fiber nozzle height calibration utility that you need to run. Hit run. To adjust your fiber nozzle, precisely print the calibration staircase. It's a 22 minute print. While we wait those 22 minutes, I'm going to try and install the strain cover. In our lab, as mandatory, we have this eyewash station, and this eyewash station drains out of there into the floor. Before they replaced this floor, it was like rotted out. Then they kindly finally replaced our floor, but they didn't really glue it properly. So now all the water that comes out of here goes under the new floor, which is disgusting. What I learned recently is that pretty much every week there's like a safety inspector that comes in and tests all the eyewash stations in every lab to make sure they're still working. And that's why this 
floor is constantly wet. A lot of other labs, when they had their eyewash installed, had like a drainage system that didn't involve draining directly on the floor. I don't know why we don't have that, but we're gonna fix it. This is the cover. We got one, two, three, and the TPU gasket underneath to give a nice secure hold and hopefully watertight seal. We have this slider. There we go. Alright, so the next step is to basically cut this tube to size. I am realizing now I could have made this slightly bigger because it's a little bit big on the inside of the tube and I'm afraid it may leak, but we'll find out. So in the lab we have silicone tape and electrical tape. What I might end up doing is just wrapping some tape around here to make it slightly thicker so it's a bit of a stucker fit into here. Let's try it. On this end, now to figure out how long to make it here, I wrapped it with some electrical tape. I will probably need to add more, but to figure out how long to cut this to, I'm just gonna put this back on temporarily. I'm gonna cut it a little bit longer, really like right here. And I did remember measuring with the tape measure like two feet. Yeah. I'm going to add more electrical tape to this and then fully install it. That looks good. So before I put the tools away, we're gonna test this. There's a few things wrong with it. First of all, gravity is a thing and not all of the water empties out from the tube. I also think because the tube is around the plastic part, there's just a little bit of water that gets like stuck right here that can't drain. And because of this connection, there might be a slight leakage right here, but at least that's in the location of the drain. I'm not that concerned. It's already way better than what was happening before where all the water would go under this like piece of floor. It actually turned out pretty good considering the limitations and in the coming weeks I'll be checking up on it to see if it's leaking, where it's breaking, things like that. But for a quick fix it's really not so bad. I mean it's already better than draining directly on the floor. Back from class to the lab, my shoe ripped, albeit it's an old pair of shoes, but still, it sounded like a flip-flop when I was walking. So, of course, I used the one hair tie on my wrist to hold the sole in place for the rest of the day. These shoes have seen some serious love, but that's the fix. I think I'm going to clean up and head home.